Hello Matrix and welcome to our series of videos on the perfect market. In today's lesson we will be focusing on competition. Competition is the last topic that we will be covering in our series of lessons on the perfect market. We will be unpacking what competition is and why it is necessary within the economy, the aims of the competition policy, South Africa's anti-monopolistic policy, the Competition Act and the competition institutions. So let's start off by defining what competition is. Competition refers to the free entry and exit of business in the market in order to ensure that a dominance of market power by particular businesses do not occur. So what we're saying in Essence Grey Twelves is that the more suppliers there are in the market, the less opportunity there is for one or two suppliers to dominate the market. Healthy competition in a country promotes more robust economic activity because it ensures that the consumer derives the benefit of lower priced goods and services from a variety of producers. So let me explain this with the aid of an example. Currently in South Africa, we have one dominant land land supplier, Telcom. So if you as a consumer are unhappy with a service or an account that you have received, there is in essence very little that you can actually do about it because there are no other suppliers that you as the consumer can choose from. Whereas let's compare that to cell phone service providers in South Africa. There are at least five cell phone service providers that we as consumers can choose from and that means that we as consumers have far more choice and that the cell phone providers have to work harder to ensure that they retain our business by providing us with good service and competing amongst each other in terms of the prices that they charge us because if we are unhappy we can simply take our business to their competitors. In order to stimulate and promote competition it is important to allow imports into a country absolutely Great Twelves. When we allow imports into our country, it provides consumers with a bigger variety of goods and services to choose from. In this regard, South Africa was one of the founder members of the World Trade Organization in 1994. The aim of the World Trade Organization is to promote global free trade through the reduction of import tariffs and the removal of import control. And you would have learned more about this when you covered protection and free trade in Chapter 5. Now what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the aims of the competition policy. But before we do that, let's just differentiate between a merger and an acquisition. A merger grade 12 occurs when two companies become one company. So if, for example, ShopRite and Checkers decide to join forces as they did, that is what we would describe as a merger. An acquisition, on the other hand, occurs when one company takes complete control over the ownership of another company. So what we're in essence saying here is that an acquisition means that one company buys out or buys over another company. So, the aim of the competition policy is to uh, prevent the abuse of economic power. Remember, grade twelves, that the fewer suppliers there are in the market, the bigger their share of market power. This will mean that a monopoly, a monopoly is when you have one supplier, will have the most market power, whereas an oligopoly, which is when you have a few suppliers, so for example, the banking industry would be a good example of an oligopoly, they will have less market power as they are one of a few suppliers. The next aim of the competition policy is to regulate the formation of mergers and takeovers. Remember grade 12's mergers and acquisitions, takeovers, all of them restrict competition in the economy. And when you have restricted competition in the economy, it decreases the choices that, sub that consumers effectively have. The next aim of the competition policy is to prevent firms from using restrictive practices. You will be learning a lot more about this when we cover imperfect markets. 
but when there are fewer suppliers in the market they could abuse their market power through collusion collusion great valves occurs when there is an arrangement between businesses to limit competition and thereby increase their profits price fixing on the other hand occurs when suppliers manipulate prices and charge higher prices with the aim of increasing their profits or firms can decide to undersupply the market with the intention of increasing their profits once again so we can clearly see great valves that restrictive practices compromise the consumer the last aim of the competition policy is to protect the consumer when there's less competition in the market the consumer bears the brunt of inflated prices inflated prices are higher prices and inferior goods and services which of course gives the consumer less choice so now that we've unpacked the aims of the competition policy, let's examine the measures that government has put in place in order to promote competition within the economy and to strongly discourage monopolies within the country. In 1994, South Africa had its first democratic elections and the ANC was voted into power. The new government's stance was that there should be no restrictions on entry into an industry. The reason for this great was, was that because during the era of apartheid, South Africa was effectively excluded from global trade due to BDS, boycotts, disinvestments and sanctions. So, for decades, South African consumers had a limited range of goods and services to choose from and the government believed that the economy needed to be stimulated by encouraging new and more suppliers. The next objective, economic transformation. A key objective of the newly elected government in 1994 was to ensure that previously marginalized groups played a far more active role in the economy, thereby redistributing economic power within the country. Ensuring that existing companies did not gain more market share. Due to BDS metrics, South Africa had limited suppliers within the economy. We effectively had market share. The government now wanted to ensure that comp competition was stimulated so that South Africans could have a bigger variety of goods and services to choose from at lower prices. The last objective, entry into the globalized market. The first democratically elected president in South Africa was the late Nelson Mandela. He spent a lot of his time encouraging and foraging foreign investment into South Africa by encouraging multinational corporations to invest in South Africa. Perhaps one of the best examples of an iconic MNC investing in South Africa was McDonald's who came into the country in November 1995 and this then ushered in a wave of new MNCs investing in South Africa. So to encourage competition the government introduced the Competition Act in 1998. These were their main objectives promoting the efficiency of the economy. Remember, metrics, when competition is promoted in an economy, the consumer derives the benefit of a wider variety of goods and services to choose from, often at lower prices. The government also derives the benefit of having more suppliers within the economy, which effectively means that more local factors of production are being used. The government will also earn more income from direct and indirect tax sources. So we can clearly see that when competition is promoted within the economy, it has far-reaching positive effects on the efficiency of the economy. It will also provide a wider variety of goods and services at lower prices. As we mentioned before, during the apartheid era, consumers had limited choices and were often charged higher prices due to the absence of competition. Stimulating economic growth. Absolutely. Competition ensures that there are more suppliers of goods and services who will demand local factors of production, thereby promoting and ensuring the growth of the economy. Lastly, 
more active participation of SMMEs. SMMEs, of course, stand for small, medium and micro enterprises. SMMEs are critical to the growth of the economy Great Twelves as it creates so many job opportunities. The South African government is extremely supportive and endorses SMMEs as many previously marginalized individuals are now able to play a more active role within the growth of South Africa's economy. So that leads us to our last component of competition institutions. Competition institutions, grade 12, ensure that healthy competition is encouraged and regulated within the economy so that all role players within the country can benefit therefrom. There are three competition institutions in South Africa. The Competition Commission, the role of the Competition Commission is to be advised about any potential mergers and takeovers within the economy. The Competition Commission also investigates any restrictive business practices and the abuse of market power so that they can ensure that public interest is in no way compromised. Therefore, Grade Twelves, no mergers and takeovers can occur without the evaluation, investigation and consent of the Competition Commission. The Competition Tribunal. The Competition Commission will submit all their recommendations to the Competition Tribunal and the role of the Competition Tribunal is to allow or reject the investigation and recommendations of the Competition Commission. The Competition Appeal Court has got the highest legal status. The Competition Appeal Court reviews decisions that were made by the Competition Tribunal and they may decide to amend or confirm these decisions. The Competition Appeal Court has a similar status to that of a High Court. Okay, Matrix, you should now understand the aim and importance of competition within an economy as well as the role of the three competition institutions. This effectively brings us to the end of our series of videos on the perfect market. The next lesson is a test that is based on perfect markets. I strongly encourage you to do the test and to check your answers with the memo that has been provided. Thank you very much. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.